Every game of his that you watch, SGA will have a few of these. He's super physical in the mid-range, and although he's definitely a taller guard, he's not crazy physically imposing. So how he does this is definitely a testament to his timing, skill, and strategy here. Because this dude is physical, and he makes it look easy in the mid-range. So let's break down how he does it and how to add it into your game. So first off, let's set the record straight on this. Yes, Shea is very physical in the mid-range. Most of the plays aren't technically offensive fouls, but you'll definitely see these sneaky pushes that send that defender back, and probably could be called if they really wanted to. But on the flip side, he's really good at not getting this called. Partially because he's sneaky with it, but more importantly, because he does it in a way that is legal most times. If you fully extend your arm or lift up around shoulder height and follow through, yes, it'll probably be going the other way. Like even this one, you're probably going to get called for if you're not SGA and your defender sells it. But if you just extend at your shoulder and do it in the right way like he does most times, it's rarely getting called at any level. And yes, I'll get some hate for this, but I do think it's valuable to learn how to be physical without getting called for it. This is something that he does very well, and this is how I'd suggest you applying it into your game. First, again, don't extend fully. Simple as that. Second, you don't want to go full force and really shove that defender. It's not about creating maximum space, just a little nudge to get what you need. So finding this balance not only ensures that you're not getting called for an offensive foul, but also that you're maintaining control. Because if you exert a ton of energy and displace your center of mass by making a big push, even if you don't get called, you're gonna be super off balance. So the general rule of thumb should be this. If you're in control as you bump, most times you won't get called. Hence the slow speed he consistently plays at too to make sure he is in control. Third, try to avoid going out of your way to do this. In other words, your goal should be to get downhill, allow that defender to close space and cut you off as you're driving, and then once they do that, then you're able to give that little nudge in a way that's way less obvious and harder to see. Similarly, the best time to do this is when the defender is already playing physically. And this is why it works so well for him because he times it when he's already going to bump with the defender, and when you're in close quarters, it's more of an equal battle. Fourth, there are ways to make this more of a natural looking movement. Like here, it's a smooth transition from a bit of a nudge to bringing that hand to the ball. Like he's gonna have to bring this arm through this motion anyways as he decelerates and brings it over to the ball for a shot. So if it bumps the defender on the way, no one really blinks an eye. And fifth, it should be mostly body. Any nudge from the upper arm is just a bonus. Like notice here how his main source of power is with his shoulder or the rest of his trunk. And as a matter of fact, let's dive into this further because it's important. If you look at any of these, he's really working to deliver that bump with his body first to the defender's body, which takes getting some momentum and rather than really flailing his body at them, he's kind of sourcing this power through his legs with a big push. So you'll notice that his trunk is almost always upright here. It's just the tool he uses to hit rather than being the source of power creation, if that makes sense. Otherwise, you're out of control and you're probably getting the chair pulled on you and making it a super tough shot on yourself. Another really low key but important component is timing. Notice how many times he's bumping when the defender has both or worst case one foot in the air as they're sliding, sprinting, jumping to cut him off, whatever. If you hit a defender who has a full base of support, it's much harder to move him than if you hit him at a vulnerable time. A lot of this comes with experience and really just developing a good feel for leverage and when to bump defenders, especially as a somewhat wiry guard who again, isn't the most physically imposing, but it also comes from putting defenders in desperate positions. So what I mean by that is that he's really good at getting a first step on his defender, getting them to turn their hips, and now this is a super tough position to defend physicality. You're in a sprint, you already have momentum going away, and you're way more susceptible to being bumped. And this is where SGA really makes his money with this physicality. If you try this on stationary defenders, it's doable, but it's way tougher to create good space and also to not get an offensive foul call. Notice the position he's in most times when he initiates this too. First, it's a really big step, like literally between the defender's feet many times which is an easy way to ensure that you're probably bumping with the body. Plus the fact that he's in a closed position, in other words, that foot kind of comes across his body, means that his body is naturally in between the defender and the ball. So it's hard to impossible to get to that ball as a defender. And if you try it out, you'll realize how much easier it is to decelerate with this foot orientation, because unlike having your toes facing forward, you're involving the lateral musculature of the hip as well. And going back to that big step at the end, if you look at some of the angles he's able to decelerate at, it's insane. Like this is something 0.0001% of hoopers have the mobility and the dynamic strength to do. Sometimes it's hard to grasp a player's deceleration ability when watching on TV, but seeing these angles shows you how well he stops on a dime. 
and then being able to also push back out of these positions and create space backwards is elite. Also, realize that if you apply this, you're gonna have to be able to shoot in some slightly weird positions. You got time, but not all the time in the world. And because that foot goes so far in front to decelerate and initiate contact, it's only right that he's gotten really good at shooting out of these slightly staggered, rotated positions. But his patience here allows him to shoot these somewhat tough shots a bit more comfortably. And he's able to do this, yes, because he's a taller guard and has a higher release point, but also because he realizes that if he gets a defender moving backwards, even if he doesn't have crazy space, they now have to completely redirect their momentum and it's tough to recover from that quickly. And then lastly, especially at a high level, defense is always playing an anticipation battle. So after getting bumped a few times, defenders expect it to happen again, and therefore they take an angle that makes this tough for them. And rather than locking in and pre-planning this bump and forcing it, sometimes all Shea has to do is stop a bit early, actually not create contact, and then kill them with just a simple decel. But this is set up by him being super physical and causing defenders to work to avoid that contact. So you can see how much detail actually goes into this one little concept, and he applies all of it crazy well. Again, you don't have to be the strongest player to do this. It's more about trying it, trying it, trying it, messing up sometimes, working on how you bump these defenders in a strategic way, and over time, you'll continue to improve. As always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Basketball and check out everything else we got going on. Link will be in the description for all of it.